Hi, and thank you for joining us. I'm Tammy Booth, perhaps better known by my internet pseudonym, Blue Girl. Show Me Progress is doing a multi-part series of interviews with candidates and office holders in advance of the August primary and November general election. And to that end, we're here at the Plaza Branch of the Kansas City Public Library. Today, we're chatting with State Representative Judy Morgan about the session that just ended, her newly redrawn district, and the campaign season ahead. Representative Morgan, Judy, Thank you for making time to talk with us this afternoon. Let's start by talking a little bit about your background and how you came to occupy your current seat. Well, I was a teacher and counselor in the Kansas City Public Schools for 29 years, then local union president for 10, so I had really been uh, tried and tested throughout the years, and then I retired and kind of thought, well, I'm just going to be retired, but uh, Jean Peters Baker resigned and was kind of unexpected, the state rep in my district, and I got approached by a number of people who asked me to run. Uh, it was a special election back in November of 2011, so I decided to run. Uh, I'm from talking to other women. A lot of times women uh, don't decide that on their own. They are asked by other people to run, and that's what kind of prompts them to do it. And I've kind of taken to it and like it, and here I am. Good. Uh, redistricting changed the boundaries yes. of your district pretty substantially. The newly redrawn 24th is actually most of the 37th and part of the 39th, the seat you currently hold. Did I get that right? Well, I actually think that it's kind of even in terms of the 37th and the 39th, the way I look at it, because it's like I lost the southerly part of the 39th, but the 37th lost its whole eastern edge. And if you actually look at the, uh, if you drill down and look at the voting patterns, there are more voters left in the old 39th than in the 37th. Ah, so it's kind of tricky the way yeah. the area lines yeah. out. It looks, yeah. it, it's, uh, it, it's, that's an illusion. Yeah. Okay, some really awful stuff managed to get through the last session. Mm -hmm. And the House doesn't have the filibuster like the Senate right. does. So there isn't much you can do beyond stand up and hope you get recognized to voice your opposition. That became an issue with the silenced seven at the end of the session. Yes, that was uh, that was on the, uh, I think it was HCR 41, the one that was protesting uh, the newest regulation in the uh, health care about birth control, about being able to provide birth control at no cost, or no copay or no cost. And uh, it was interesting because the debate went from the morning to the afternoon. I actually got called on in the morning, so I got to speak, and it was one of the few women that was, was called on. And then we went back in in the afternoon, and... I think it, eventually seven different people were standing who were not called on. And like you say, we don't. not only do we not have the filibuster, uh, debate can be stopped with a majority vote. So there's 106 Republicans and there's 57 Democrats. So you can probably figure how often we're going to win that one. So whenever they decide they want to close debate, somebody gets up, moves it, we vote. All the Democrats always vote no and the Republicans vote yes and debate is closed. So those seven women did not get to speak. But I do think um, we did a great job in terms of having a press conference right afterwards. I think it was kind of a combination of maybe Mary Stills and Tashara Jones' idea. And we got right out there publicly and put it out what happened. And I thought that brought some attention to it and I thought that was a good thing. If you could wave a magic wand and pass one of the good pieces of legislation that failed, what would it be? Well, I would like to have passed something that had to do with jobs, something that we could have done something on recruiting and, and, and creating jobs. And really, there really actually was not much out there even proposed, unfortunately. What failed bill concerned you the most and gave you the greatest sense of relief when it died? Um, the one about making gun owners a protect, protected class, which would have said that you, it would be discriminatory if you hired or fired somebody based on their gun ownership, and that did fail. We passed it in the House, and it was really a huge number of people that voted in favor of it in the House. Very few people voted against it. I was one of the few that did. Uh, a lot of the suburban and rural Democrats even voted for it because they're just, they're afraid that some, their opposition's going to do some kind of flyer that says this person is anti-gun. But I was glad that one did not pass. Let's talk a little bit about term limits and how they have affected the state legislature. I think they've affected them negatively, and I think it's because there's no uh, institutional memory, there's no history. That's part of the problem. I think even maybe a bigger part of the problem is, though, that there's no time for people to build relationships. 
And so the, you know, the Republicans and Democrats in the past, if they had been there a long time, they might disagree, but they were able to build relationships and then sometimes at least reach some kind of consensus on matters and move forward and do things that are good for the people of Missouri. But now with no term, with the term limits rather, people don't have time to build those relationships. They're just not even there long enough. And I think that's caused um, a great divide in which nobody's inter there's no mo there's no motive really to get together and work things out and I think that's been a, a great detriment I agree um, how will the partial term that you're currently serving affect you with regard to term limits should you retain your seat sure um, the what the law says is if you serve less than a, a year in your in that final term then you it doesn't really count against you so basically I could run four more times so I would have nine years rather than eight and there are several folks in the legislature right now that just went out with nine years because they came in under that same circumstance. Um, I have to ask you about the sullying in, of the hall of famous Missourians with an infamous one. Um, a lot of people think he was just added as a monument to spite. I don't know. I mean, it was just so outrageous. I, I, I can't tell you how many of my constituents wrote to me, and they were just so angry about it. And of course, it hit right at the time that he had called the uh, Georgetown Law student a slut and all the other horrible things he said about her. And if anybody ever goes back and reads her transcript, she said nothing about her, her own sex life. It was all about women's health. It was about people not being able to afford birth control. She said nothing about herself. So I think people were just so outraged about that, and, and I had people Obviously, they, that's probably why they had the cameras, because they told me they wanted to go down and bust the thing down. Um, so I wish we could have stopped that. That would have been, that would have been nice. Uh, I, there's talk now about maybe making it so no living person can be inducted. Yes, and actually the, the Democrats did put forth a, a, a bill near the, shortly after that happened, and it would have taken it out of this uh, control of the speaker. There would have been more like a committee that would decide, and they, they and there was some criteria that if uh, Rush would have never made it in with the criteria that were established in that bill. And I think that is something we will obviously try to keep pushing for, to get something so that something like this doesn't happen again. I am hoping we can get it out of the hall. That would be nice. <laughs> Judy, I want to thank you for taking the time to talk with me this afternoon. It's been a pleasure chatting with you, and I hope we get a chance to do this again soon. Good luck with your campaign, and enjoy your summer. Well, thank you very much. Thank you for taking the time to spend a few minutes with us as we get to know the candidates who are vying to represent you in Jeff City. These races are really important. Remember, there is an inverse but proportional relationship with where a name occurs on the ballot and how directly the effects of that office are on your life. The farther down the ballot a name is found, the greater the impact the person elected to that office has on your life every day. Getting to know the candidates is more than just a good idea. It's your civic duty.